Hello, hello, and welcome to Ad Week Together. It is Monday, April 27th. I'm Stephanie Siegel, the editor of TV Spy, which covers the business of local TV news. Excuse me. And today, we're going to be talking about how the local news stations have been handling COVID-19 coverage. And I am here with WABC anchor Bill Ritter. Thank you for joining us. Today, we're talking about uh, local news, uh, the power of local news, um, how to cover a pandemic, how it has changed the way we do local news, and also your story. Um, so thank you. Let's start off with March 14th. We talked about this last night over the phone. That was the day that businesses started shutting down. And what did that look like for you at home in New York City and uh, and the WABC newsroom? Before, there was this kind of movement of, of awareness that so many stores were closing because, and it was a little like a ghost town because okay. of rising rents. And and now of course it's just, everything's shut down except for the essential, right. essential things. And it's very strange. It's a very different real ghost town kind of feel to it. And even around the corner of my, my favorite bagel place, I went to go get some on <laughs> Saturday and they had closed. They had been giving takeout only. You walk in three people at a time or something. And, and they were shut down and the, and the landlord had posted a notice. It was so sad. Uh, it po posted a notice saying their rent for April, $47,000 for a bagel oh shop. Oh my God. They hadn't been <laughs> paid. Bagels they have to sell. <laughs> it's a buck and a half a bagel. How many bagels? That's a lot of bagels. Hope everyone gets smoked. So what sad. was happening? I know. And, right. What was uh, happening in the newsroom at that time? Was there a feeling of like, okay, we need to start the social distancing right now. We need to put measures in place. Or was that, did that happen sort of afterwards? We uh, started social distancing right away. Uh, and we um, also started experimenting with a few people going home and working from home. And, and okay. it, it grew. Over the next month, or three weeks really, or two weeks, it, it grew every mm -hmm. week. It was a little like what Governor Cuomo did when he said, we're going to shut down uh, you know, 25% of your workforce and then 50 and then yeah. 75 and then 100. So it was a gradual thing. And we sort of mirrored that, I think. I don't know if it was by design, but we could see where this trend was going to go. And so they really did a good job trying to get ahead of this. You know, could we have done it earlier? Sure. It would have been great because we had a lot of you know little bugs right. we had to, had, to, had to work out. You know, like your show here, you know, all of a sudden you had to work it out. And, and so you'd have, you know. This is a show and tell show today. <laughs> it's proving my point. And right. I, 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 I think the audience, it was interesting. You know, we're, we're used to a big high def and, you know, everything's perfect. We're the biggest yeah. TV news station in the country. And we're used to having this, you know, well-oiled machine, which we are, with everything working really well, which it does. And all of a sudden you're at home. And so you see, I don't know, if my wife saw this shot. Um, she'd say, you know, why did you have the bulletin board full of the kids stuff, you know, or yeah, that kind of stuff. I don't see that like that. I, I think the audience says, okay, we can understand that you're at home. You look like my house. So that's okay. Yeah. Let's, I, we talked about that, the vulnerability um, that has come into play here for news anchors. And I think we should touch on that. But first, what was it around what May, no, March 24th, you know, after you sort of play it safe, you do the news, you get around the technical difficulties, you bring the important stuff to the viewers, you, you sort of stay on the air, you got sick. And we did a story about it. Um, you know, I think we did the story on March 30th, I think it was around the 24th, there it is. You, you, you started coming down with something, you made an announcement on your Sunday show from home that you had a possible case of COVID. What was that like? You know, it started uh, after the 11 o'clock on March 24th. Uh, we were doing a, a midnight a news cut in uh, at the end of Nightline, uh, which had flopped, flipped, flipped with, with Jimmy Kimmel, flipped uh, from two, two spots because there was, there was so much news. And then I, I would go home, and, and uh, I by the time I got home at about 1230, uh, it just hit me. And uh, oh. it, in my head, it felt like a, a train had gone through from one ear to the other, and half the caboose had gotten stuck inside and didn't mm. go out and it was quite uh you know profound and i i didn't like it and i don't i re really rarely get sick um and i uh, I, w I felt uh oh i got something so i went right to sleep i didn't wake up till 11 o'clock despite all these alarms and um and despite the pauses in my in my brain um, and i was really groggy and i called to work and i said i don't know what's going on but i just don't feel very well and I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure i can't come in today and i probably shouldn't given given what's going on in this town and um 
And there began, that was on a, a Wednesday morning, the 25th. And, you know, I felt pretty bad. It was, uh, I talked to my doctor, we, we, you know, he diagnosed me. He, um, he, he said, it's likely a mild case because I, I didn't have a heavy fever and I had no pain in my, in my uh, uh, lungs. But, but I did have, you know, this overwhelming feeling like I had been beat up and, and I was sleeping mm-hmm. 12, 11 to 12 hours a day for the next 10 or 11 days. And it wow. was, you know, quite different. I usually get five to six hours of sleep. So it was, it was not good, but I did do a couple things. And I, I say this at the suggest, uh, because I did it at the suggestion of my doctor and also the de- suggestion of my trainer and other do- medical people on our, that we, I know at ABC and elsewhere. And they said, you know, sleep is the most important. Hydrate is the most important, hmm. but also don't exercise like you normally exercise, but, but get moving, get your oxygen going, oh, breathe, <laughs> practice breathing. And and I felt also that I wanted to work. So I really only missed one day of work that first day. And the second day I, I had did a remote. Um, so you're looking right now, the one on the left was my first day out 17 days later in quarantine. Uh-huh. Uh, they did not test uh-huh. me. They did not test me because I was not seriously ill. And we found out later, Steph, that, you know, probably five times as many people have this virus as when we say there have been a quarter million confirmed cases. Hmm. Probably five times. Uh, so I set up a little studio in my, uh, I had three different places. Uh, you can see uh, that's in my, oh, yeah, in my that, yeah. room. Yep. And then in the back, I set up a uh, a gym in my den. <laughs> my family uh, uh, went to Long the Island. Bike. The bike. The bike has now been replaced by that. But at the beginning, I, I rode only to get my blood going. Uh, I had that's a trainer fun. twice a week to, who worked with me on breathing exercises via Zoom and really did help me. When I would talk, let's say if I talked to you on the phone, I would walk around the apartment. I didn't stay, stay still after stay I woke still. up. Yeah. I, I moved. That's and I great. think that helped. If you're seriously ill with this, you can't do that. Um, but I had a likely virus. And the picture you had of me uh, going out with a mask, um, I went to get my plasma tested the first day I could go out. And I went across right. the park, walked across the park, and I was tested positive for um, uh, COVID-19 antibodies. And in the picture you had on the mm-hmm. left with me it strapped down there giving blood, I'm giving, starting last Thursday, I gave my first dose of eight weekly doses of antibody plasma, which three people uh, is, is, can be treated with one dose. And so I could conceivably help 24 people with an anti, an, antibody plasma injections. And I, I'm just thrilled by this, if, it's, if, it's, if it works. If it, it works, works, right. You know, this adrenaline we have as journalists to be on top of it, get the story, get the information out there. Do you feel like that's the feeling for you and for the newsroom right now, just to be as connected as possible to the viewers at all I think, times? I don't think there's any question about that. It's, it's well put, I think. Um, you know, we are, I mean, the beauty of local news is that you're in people's homes and living rooms and at night in their bedrooms and, you know, in their most personal spaces. The relationship between us and the viewers are is a kind of, you know, personal one. In, in, in the normal situation and when there's a crisis and there's never really been a crisis like this that I can think of a couple you know 9-11 certainly and uh, Superstorm Sandy when so many people were without right. a home lost their lives and without power and we were flooded um, I, I think that we have you know we we re-engage this incredibly profound relationship between people bringing the news and the people receiving the news and who desperately need accurate facts and information to help them make decisions uh, and guide them through this. And I think that then the other level, which you talked to is that, you know, we walk with them. We're in this together. We say it. It's not a cliche. Yeah. I got sick. And people saw me every day doing a story on the five and the six, which I anchor. And I wasn't anchoring. I was just t- doing a story. And, and it, you know, I think it, it, it brings a profound thing and they've, they saw me get better. And I, I think it burnishes this, this, this tight relationship that, local news has with uh, with with the viewers and I, I I think you know all those little things we talked about earlier about you know getting the you know <laughs> the background maybe messing up you know closing that computer over this end of me whatever it works right, right. The making it all understands that and our our technical people just did a fabulous job getting us lined up you know I'm wearing a microphone right now that's that's our station's mic that's yeah right that's this. amazing so it's 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 great you know and I, but I think that it it we walk hand in hand in all this stuff. You know, we are there as we see all this human kindness overflowing, uh, uh, help people helping people. And then we're there when there's just unbelievable sorrow. We, you know, the town you lived in, Steph, 
You know, there's a lot of people who are dead here. More than 12,000 people in this city have died. That's just yes. staggering. Yeah, staggering. Yeah. Um, I think people forgive this, by the way. They know that yeah, maybe. it's the internet and who the heck knows what's going on. But we're here right. and this is what we're We logged doing. off everything. Yeah. We, <laughs> um, to any local news person who's watching this, I think this is a real opportunity from them. Um, I joked about Legendary, but, you know, I mean, there are young people out there who maybe want to get to New York and have seen your face on the air for many years. And... Um, you know, I would say all of them are really sort of striving for perfection in a time that that's not really a, necessarily an opportunity, you know, to be the perfect anchor person and the perfect outfit, perfect hair, all these things. How do you, like you said, sort of a reinforce that vulnerability is okay right now and how, yeah, how do you embrace it? I mean, you, like you said, you, you work in a powerhouse station, now you're working from your house. Um, how did you embrace it? Any tips for that? Yes, and uh, it's a good question. I, I, I will say that um, I, I'm working now back in the studio, so I'm I'm, I'm right, here, right, I'm right. Well, home right now. But, but yes. I, do. I am home now. Yes, um, you I, are working I, back in the studio. I, I think, I think that me. that at all times, uh, you know, I, I I was a newspaper reporter for 15 years, a print reporter, and then I became a television reporter at the age of 37. And so, but I I can remember the times I I I messed up or I made a mistake, and mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it. It, it's not good. It really is the worst thing you can do because we have one thing. If I use this word, because your your ad week people will understand this. I, I this is our product. We sell. We sell trust and credibility. And if we don't have that, if the audience doesn't believe we have that. Then we're sort of no matter what you look like, no matter what you sound like, no matter what how you dress, yeah. no matter how many weeks you go without a haircut. The only thing we have that really matters in the end is trust and credibility. And you know, so we talk a lot and we certainly have been dealing with this when, when the media has been under attack uh, for any mistake or, or even when they don't make mistakes. You know, we, we, we strive to tell the truth and the facts and, and help people get through this. And I, I think that in these last, you know, three, three years, we've been put to the test and have, have become even more aware of how important it is, you know, to be accurate. And when we're not, it's, you know, it, it, it sucks, but, it, it, you know, we, we try not to do that. Um, and we try to really say, this is what we know. Here are the numbers we know. When we realize, um, and I certainly realized that when I realized I wasn't counted and so many people I knew in mild cases were not counted in the official count, then I think we're obligated to say, here's the confirmed case count right now in New York City or New York State or the country. Yeah. But we know that so many people are not being tested, positive or negative, because they're not given the test, that there are many, many more people who have this virus than the official confirmed numbers and that's the truth and for us not to say that would be um hurting the public because i didn't get tested and then when i did get tested for the antibodies it showed of course that i had antibodies yeah. so that meant i had the virus so it proved the point and so that's part of the reporting process that's great advice and i know we wanted to talk about more but because of the technical issues i think we should uh wrap it now and maybe we can revisit this later but listen this is um, a great conversation and thank you and i'm glad you're well and this is a real pleasure for me to speak with you so thank you for that and let me quickly tease to tomorrow's show with kelsey sutton from adweek who will be here speaking with allison moore she is the ceo of comic relief us thanks for joining us guys and have a great day thank you